Hey, what's up everybody? It's Rox and I am coming to you today with a review from Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 7, The Reunion Part 2. So you guys, I just got back from vacation, like literally just got back last night. Still very much in vacation mode. It took everything in my might to get out here and do this video, but um, you know, the anal part of me just won't let me get that much behind. But yeah, we're gonna do Real Housewives of Atlanta today because love and hip hop ATL takes entirely too much energy and I'm just not there for that today. I don't feel like no impersonations or nothing. So that's why we just gonna get this. Y'all the reunion is, you know, it's, it's whatever. So it ain't like I got to do no whole bunch of talking anyway. My vacation was a great, great time. It was so much needed. I know I hadn't really mentioned you guys that I was leaving, but you guys know how I am talking about all my, all my um, personal shit but yeah me and my family and my girlfriend Debbie um, she and her husband it was their 10 year um, anniversary we had all gone on a cruise 10 years ago she got a good group of us maybe half of the group about 70 of us went on this cruise to the Bahamas over the last four or five days so that was really really nice and was in Miami and a great time had by all and uh, yeah I'm tired today <laughs> Okay, you know you need a vacation from the vacation. So I actually took today off and it's just really nice because my husband and the kids are gone. So it's just like, good. Okay, so a little bit of me time. I'm actually on my way to go pick up my dog from the kennel. We couldn't take her on the cruise, of course. So she is waiting for me to pick her up. So I was just like, let me go on and do this video beforehand. And um, then, like I said, we'll pick up with, I think, we'll pick up with Love and Hip Hop tomorrow, you guys. I just, I just need a little bit of... I just need a little bit of get it back together time. So tomorrow, if I if I can't feel like I if I can't get the energy up, I don't know if Love and Hip Hop will even be up tomorrow. But most likely it will be because the Capricorn in me will not let me get off schedule. <laughs> but anyway, you guys, the review. Let's get to it, shall we? Last week, I didn't talk about how I thought everybody's hair and makeup was. And um, the makeup, last week, I didn't think the makeup was all that horrible. But it seems like as time goes on, everybody's makeup, I don't know if it's under the hot lights or what, is starting to either slide off their face or we are starting to see certain oil deposits lift. Okay, the coloring is getting strange. Everybody's makeup, because last week, I thought um, Candy's makeup was pretty nice. This week, I felt like... I could see the shadow and it was starting to look light. I don't know what it is with everybody's makeup. It's it's not even, it just doesn't seem to be camera ready. So yeah, everybody, everybody's makeup was looking like their eyes was staying fine. I'm just talking about the foundation. It was just doing something really, really strange. The hair, for the most part, you guys, I was, I didn't think that anybody's hair looked bad. I'm trying to think about everybody's hair. Of course, everybody's talking about Cynthia's hair. Cynthia is, we have the same hairstylist. <laughs> and actually, it's not my favorite look on Cynthia. Like, Cynthia, I like, always like when she has her hair sleek. But, you know, they try a lot of things and all. Not my favorite look, but it did, it doesn't look bad to me. The funny thing about, let me just drop a story on y'all real fast. So, my hairstylist was doing Cynthia's hair the same day that my daughter, Jada, wanted to get her hair black, back black. You guys know, y'all don't know. But my daughter put me all through, through all this fucking hell trying to get her hair lightened and then she decided she didn't like it. So we were, I was like, fine, we'll put it back black and I know once it's black, it ain't, it ain't changing. So they were there together at the same time getting their hair done when my hairstylist was, was coloring Cynthia's hair. You know, in between all of that, she was doing Jada's hair as well. And you guys just don't know how uncomfortable it is to sit there. Like, I don't know if she watches my video. I've been around her, but I'm sure she doesn't remember or even know who I am. But that was years ago. So now when we're in the same place together and it's such a environment where it's not all, you know, glitz and glamour. I mean, you know, we just sitting there looking like we getting our hair done. Well, Jada was getting her hair done, and uh, she was just sitting over there, and I was thinking to myself, like, oh, my God, I wonder if she knows who I am. Like, I've never mentioned anything to her. And I try to keep, I know I don't like to have my style. I would never want my styles to be in between, you know, shit. So, you know, I don't, you know, my stylist doesn't gossip to me about her, and I don't, you know, so it's just like, whatever. But I just still, when I was sitting there, I was like, now, nah, I know I didn't see it some not to becoming things of Cynthia this season. So I wasn't sure if she was going to say anything. But, you know, of course she didn't. I wouldn't expect her to. She doesn't seem to be the confrontational type. And you guys know that I'm not either. But, yeah, it was just like they were getting, when she was getting her hair done, you know, and I could I saw how her hair was going to be. I had no idea it was going to be like that. I thought that she was going to wear it curly. But, anyway, 
that's enough of that um but i was fine with everybody else's hair like nini's hair i thought actually looked nice you know if we're gonna be going by the shit that she's been having in the past and then everybody else pretty much with the exception of candy everybody else had like the straight sleek look claudia i am not a fan of the black hair on claudia i thought that the hair style was cool but i like her hair lighter but um even i thought her hair looked fine so yeah yeah Hair was fine, makeup was, and we are just going to go down the list of shit that I wrote down. Um, first, they start off with the Detroit public school system, the charitable donation that both Nene and Kenya was supposed to give. Kenya gave her money, Nene didn't. Evidently, Kenya posted it on Twitter, checked that she was giving the check to the school. Nene hasn't done it. When Andy asked her when was she going to do it, Nene said, whenever I get ready. Nene's whole thing was, I'm trying not to make a mockery of it. Kenya did all all of that just to get attention and I was thinking to myself like well Nene was actually the one who challenged Kenya so really if we gonna go all the way back to the beginning Nene was one that was making a mockery not necessarily of any type of charitable donation but of the fact that Kenya didn't have the money so it was more so about being who was the richest one and who could give this money okay well now I felt like Nene was backtracking because Kenya posted it on Twitter which is kind of being like you know kind of putting it out there but I also know Kenya probably did that because she wanted everybody to know that she did it, okay, that I held up to my end of this challenge and um, because otherwise people will say that she didn't do it, which is what she said. So Nene said, I'll do it. And I have a feeling Nene will do it. But Nene is going to make it a point to let you know that when she does it, that she is not going to let people know. However, she is intending on doing it. So that was the whole thing with that. Of course, Kenya used it to make it bigger and say, you know, this shows to Nene's character and that she's not trying to help the kids and all that. Nobody can ever say that Kenya's not an opportunist. I'm not saying that Kenya won't try to help the kids as well, but Kenya definitely knows how to use a circumstance for many, many, many opportunities. Okay, so in this point, it was good to make her seem like she's there for the children. Okay, not saying that she's not, but Kenya's a whole bunch of things. <laughs> Nene tried to be sarcastic and say that she didn't have the money and that, you know, when she scratches it up, that she will make sure that she puts it on Twitter for everybody to see. That was like a behind the, that was a behind the back jib at Kenya. Basically, she was saying that that's what Kenya did. She didn't have the money. She scratched it up. She gave it to the school and then she posted it on Twitter. So hopefully you guys caught that, but that was it with then that. Then we start talking about Cynthia and her newfound voice this season. Um, Cynthia is definitely um, a different person that she's been in seasons past. I don't necessarily think that Cynthia has been a one to not speak up. I think that Cynthia has just always been one to speak up in whatever way that Nene was going. Now that Cynthia has decided to move it over to Kenya's side, I don't even know if I can say that Cynthia is still more vocal. I'm just saying now she's switched over for the other team. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if I feel like Cynthia is that much different. And even when they asked um, Nene, did she feel like uh, Cynthia was? And she said, no. I mean, you guys have to remember, Cynthia has been super messy in the past. Super. You guys remember back when Marlo and Sheree was on the show, Cynthia had got a lot of shit going. So it's, it hasn't been nothing different. Um, I think it's just that maybe it might be Cynthia might be in the whole defense mode because people have been pointing out that she's not no longer up Nene's ass, you know, which would piss me off if people said that about me. Even if I knew it to be true, I wouldn't want to hear that about me because that makes it seem like I have no backbone in that. I, you know, so I think now Cynthia is in this mode where she feels like she's just got to say it because everybody thinks that she's such a fucking pushover. And then to show that Cynthia is about it, about it, okay, she gets real crunk with Phaedra. They start arguing about the shit that she said about Apollo. Cynthia, for whatever reason, will not admit that she was wrong in that situation. Had nothing to do with her and she should have played it a little differently even if Apollo did go over there and talk to Peter she should have played that that hand differently but instead because she was trying to be something that she necessarily isn't which was going back and you know talking and getting totally caught up in Kenya and Phaedra's bullshit and it had nothing to do with Cynthia she was saying how Phaedra made a big deal out of it but Cynthia is the one she was the one that messed that up and we all know that so while she was sitting there she should have 
instead of her going back and forth with Phaedra, because then the shit got really catty, they started talking about how Phaedra didn't win any cases, and then, you know, Phaedra started talking about how bar one is bar none, and how Cynthia's agency doesn't do anything but pageants for little girls, and, you know, all that kind of shit is just stupid. You old women got, everybody's established in whatever career that they have, you guys are sitting here trying to talk about who has more money, you know. So the shit starts to get gutter and starts, not really gutter, but it just gets childish. So that went on back and forth. But what Cynthia should have said was, you know what? I shouldn't have been in that. That was my mistake. Okay, I shouldn't have told Kenya and Claudia. Instead of her trying to act like she didn't really do nothing when she knew that she did. But I hated to see that that went on and on and on the way it did. You know, and Andy, forever the drama queen that he can be, you know, he just was, he was loving it. He had his card and he would look back this way and this way and this way and this way. I was just like, yeah, he was like, this is perfect TV. <laughs> Then you guys, Phaedra and Candy's relationship. It is nothing more that can be said about this other than it is a misunderstanding between friends and it's a friendship that has run its course. Even though they have finally talked about why this one didn't call, you know, this one had a lot going on in their family as well, you know, and this one was, you know, family's going to jail and this one's... You know, all of this going on. Now that they finally talked about it, it's too much fucking water under the bridge. Everybody is up in their feelings. And um, even though I have to be more on Candy's side than Phaedra's, I understand both sides. It's just, everybody has shit going on. And one is probably a little bit more needy than the other. And where one thought that the friendship could withstand some distance because they were going through it, the other one felt like they needed that person. And you can't be there for everybody sometimes. It's just It just doesn't work that way. That's what happens with new friendships a lot of times people don't really understand how you work i mean look, i've talked about this before so it was sad when i was watching them talking Can candy started to broke up i was just like mm, oh candy <laughs> y'all want one little okay i'll give it to you when she graduated i blocked my calendar so that i can drive hours just to see her and be there for her and every time they bring up and say something about her i stand up for her so to see her it play me like I only care about the money. I was like, really? That's okay. Because you ain't got to worry about that no more. I was just like, oh, it's okay, Candy. Okay, because I understand what Candy is saying. But I can kind of understand how Phaedra is. Like, I have friends like Phaedra. Okay, and we've had, we, we, we've had a few tests. Um, but we've been able to get through them. But, you know, I, I can say that I am one of those ones that are not necessarily the the most supportive sometimes if I'm going through something at the same time. So, I mean, I'm just, it just boils down to, like I said, it's a friendship that has run its course. Even though they say that they are together now, it's never going to be the same. Um, and I don't even know if either of them want to be the same. They might just be in different places in their life. Candy is now married to Todd, has her own drama. She has new family. You know, Phaedra's going through a divorce. And it just, maybe they're not on the same page no more. So... It's a sad situation, but I think that that's, I think it's a done deal there. And then you guys, the last part, the husbands come on the screen and, um, you know, they all look really nice. I think they all have good looking husbands. Andy is teasing Peter about his, his women names, Patricia and Lou Peter. <laughs> Peter was like, I don't give a fuck. I'm always going to say what the fuck I want to say when I want to say it. And if anybody don't like it, then fuck you. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I tell you, when the nigga come out, I always get a little giggle. Cynthia was just like a little less hood, a little less <laughs> So anyway, you know, after Andy asked Todd how he's doing with his shows and, you know, he asked Greg about how Greg is. He asked Greg, did he ever get upset when he sees the things that NeNe goes through? And honey, Greg gave the most grown manish answer. I was just like, motherfucker, I bet you Gre Greg got on some gray flannel cologne right there. <laughs> if he ain't smell like my daddy, I know something. So he was just like, look, I am a grown man. I don't get involved with the shit that the women go through. That's on them. If I felt like I needed to get involved, I would. He was like, but I got a strong as shit wife and she can handle everybody up on this fucking stage. If she needs me, she know where to look. I'm right over her right shoulder. I was like, bitch, you better say that, okay? I was real happy with that, okay? Because it do be ridiculous how the men get involved. I mean, certain things, I understand how men get involved because the men
men talk amongst each other. But when it starts to get into, when they start arguing into their wife's shit, then it just be like a little bit too much. And that's what Peter is definitely guilty of. We start talking about the African. Again, Kenya uses this, <laughs> this opportunity to say that the women all started copying dating Africans after she did. Portia says that she never did date any African old man, even though it was all over the blogs and they were even hinting around it on the show. She says she never did. Then we get to Phaedra. Phaedra says, no, she never did cheat with an, with an African, that she loved Apollo and that she still loves Apollo and she would not go against her marriage and cheat with somebody by the name of Chocolate the African. She says that the text messages were fake and when he asked him, well, why would he do that? And he was just like, look, he's at the end of his rope. You know, he starts to get desperate. He just does shit, which I could totally believe. Then Andy asked Peter and um, Todd about, you know, what, what it was that Apollo did. Like, I don't have a problem with Apollo talking to um, Todd and Peter. Peter said he gave him the whole full story about, you know, this, that, and the other, what Apollo told him. You know, he was just like, I don't know if I believed or didn't believe him, but, you know, he gave me a full story, and even Todd was like, you know, he came over and I listened. Like, I don't have a problem with that, because men talk just like women talk, and that's fine. Where the shit gets sticky is when you have couples that are all friends, and then one of the couples break up. Okay, so then it, on, the, on the two other couples that are left over, the wives want to of course, be kind of on the woman's side, and then the husbands kind of want to be on Todd's side, because that's their boy, just like, this is my girl, but the shit gets twisted when maybe the wife, one of the other couples, start to understand the husbands that's getting broken up with, starts to understand his side, or vice versa, you know, you don't never really know how, how people will choose when a couple breaks up. So then it starts to put tension in the couples that are still married's life. You know, it's a lot that goes on with that. So when I was listening to all that, I was just like, oh, this is just a mess. I thought it was interesting, though, that um, when Candy was explaining, like, I, Candy was just like, I told her about those text messages. Okay? It wasn't like I... She was blindsided. I said, Apollo came over here with some shit. You know, I didn't even really pay much attention to it, which I can totally believe because you guys know when Candy shuts down, she shuts the shit off. But she's like specifically said she did point that out to Phaedra. So it wasn't like Phaedra didn't know about it. Um, and Phaedra admitted that she was at her breaking point, you know, when she, that shit that had happened with Apollo not going to jail, and then when they went out to dinner the next day, Candy had invited her, she didn't really want to go, and then she, as soon as she got there, she felt ganged up on, because Cynthia pulled out the bullshit about the text messages that Apollo said, and of course, Kenya was all over it, like, you the whore, and you the this, and you the that. Again, I understood why Kenya felt that she needed to do that, but Cynthia needed to get her ass out of it, but anyway, Phaedra was just like, I just felt like... I was at my breaking point. And I said that in the video. I said, everybody has a fucking breaking point. You can't take the shit no more. We are watching this and not realizing people's lives are at stake here. Even though it's TV and entertainment for this, is people's real lives. And if anybody's real life shit is happening on the show, it's Phaedra's. You know, because she's so stoic and guarded a lot of times, I think we just be forgetting that she's human and yeah. So she was just like, yeah, I couldn't take the shit no more. Like, I wanted to be the bitch ass. I you know, I knew I wasn't going to be doing that, but it was just like, I, it was, I was just over it. Andy was trying to point out and make it, you know, really hit home with Kenya that if you kept on saying that Apollo lied about you, why is it that Apollo didn't lie about Phaedra? And Kenya was trying to, you know, she was trying to make it seem like she don't know what to believe. Well, Kenya doesn't believe that. I don't really think Kenya believes that, but Kenya is going to stick with that because Phaedra has said so many horrible things about her. So she was just like, you know what? I got a legion of people behind me that if I say I don't believe it, then they not gonna believe it either. So I think that's kind of how Kenya is working this whole thing. Phaedra just talks about how Kenya was flirting with Apollo and he was a married man and, you know, Kenya starts to talk about how, you know, she, the text messages and the this and that and I was just like tired of hearing it but I started laughing when um, Kenya said, even Nene flirted with Peter and honey, that Nene, if that fucking saying the hit dog will holler didn't make more sense than it did, girl, let me tell you, that Nene was just like, oh no, I didn't, I didn't never flirt with Peter. I didn't never flirt with Peter. You know, good and fucking well you did flirt with Peter. Nene flirted, no. 
What Nene did was, women, we know when a man really likes us or is really enamored or they are, are in awe of us. Okay, and that's how Peter was with Nene. He looked at her and she was a star to him. They didn't never were never inappropriate with each other, but Peter was always big up in Nene, and Nene always was like, ah, Peter, you know, you play into that because first of all, it's good for your ego. Secondly, it's just sort of kind of makes you feel like, you know, this person is really on in your corner. And she looked at Peter and Cynthia as a team, but she but they both were like that. Both Cynthia and Peter. Were, I mean, shit, they both was like almost in love with Nene. We, we, we didn't just make this shit up. We all saw it in past seasons. So for Nene to be like, oh, no, you did. I ain't never, never, I ain't never flirted with Peter. You're not going to embarrass me and my husband, bitch. This is never going to. I was just like, me, you ain't got to do all them histrionics, baby, because we already seen it. And we already believed it before Kenya even said it. Fuck, I think we said that before Kenya even made it on the show. So, yeah, no. No, Nene. You ain't wasn't even no need for all of that, okay? I never felt like Nene was going to do anything with Peter, but I think that we all knew that Peter and Cynthia both were just like... <laughs> Nene, if y'all calm your motherfucking ass down, but she was so mad, wasn't she? Shit, if she was white, she'd have been beat red. <laughs> All right, you guys, I am so glad that I got through this video because I was dreading doing it. Now, I'm going to get it back together, y'all, but I am st definitely still in cruise mode. I ain't never drank and ate so much in my life. Y'all, them drink packages on a cruise, if you ever go on a cruise, when I tell you, I swear I think I done drunk about $600 worth of alcohol. <laughs> Every time I turned around, I was going to that bar and get something. I mean, I just, I, but I really had a good time. It was totally needed. And my family, all of us went, and it was good to see all of my, um, you know, all of my old friends from L.A. This is my Belizean best friend, Debbie, and all her Belizean family, you guys. And they party, they asses off, and they like to dance, and they like to have a good time. They are young at heart people. And I love to be around them. Plus, they're like, they're like really like my aunts and uncles and cousins and nieces and nephews. And our kids are all the same age. And so the kids had a good time. The men and the women. Yeah, it was just totally needed. So I am really still in that mode, you guys. Like, I just, bitch can't get it together. Okay, so, <clears throat> but I'll be back right somewhere towards the end of the week. <laughs> I'm going to go get my doggie right now because I'm sure she is tired of being at the kennel. Been there for six days. So, you guys remember to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is Forex Rocks. And uh, everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right? All right. So, I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I plan on doing the same. Until next time, Rockstars. Bye.